You are listening to The Morning Mix with Maya here on WTSQ 88.1 FM in Charleston, West Virginia. It's Monday, the 28th day of November. It is 11.03 a.m. And I'm talking on the phone with Chris Small. He is known as the Solo Traveler. And you have a YouTube page that people can check you out, follow you on your travels. You shoot some videos when you're in interesting spaces and places. And people can find that at on YouTube at csmall2000. That's how they can find you on there. So talking with you, I want to first start out. I want to know, you know, where this traveling bug came from. When did you start traveling, whether it just be within the United States or around the world? Uh, well, growing up with my family, uh, we'd always had like summer and summer vacations where we would go to different spots. Um, I used to go to like Tahoe a lot with my dad and brother and sister every year. Um, and then with my mom and my um, my grandpa my, or my papa on my mom's side, we would go to England because I have some relatives out there or Canada. Um, and just watching movies and reading books, playing video games growing up, I just had a fascination with new places and, and, and a love for exploring them. Now, where are you originally from? Arizona. You're originally from Arizona. And where was the first place that you went on your own? It was your trip. You picked the place. It wasn't with family or anything like that. So the first time that I actually, um, well, the first time that I drove somewhere by myself was uh, Las Vegas in California. That was about five hour drive and a six hour drive. And then the first time that I actually flew somewhere by myself and, and did a trip uh, was Iceland back in 2014. I know so many people that have gone to Iceland. What time of the year did you go? I was in there uh, around fall time, October-ish. It was gorgeous out there. Uh, I loved all the, the geysers and the... Um, Getting to see the Golden Circle. I think my favorite, though, was all the hot springs, especially uh, Blue Lagoon. Yeah, it's it's an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous place to visit. And it really doesn't matter what time of year you go. But, yeah, definitely, you went at a good time. I think a really good time of the year to go there over to Iceland. I'd like to go back um, during the winter time at some point. I, um, I uh, The following year after that, I actually did a trip to Sweden and got to stay at the Ice Hotel and see the Northern Lights. So I think I want to see the different ice formations in Iceland as well. Like they, I've read that they have ice caves and the Northern Lights and things like that more towards the winter months as well. So right now you're traveling around the U.S., correct? Yes. So where, so you've been to several places, you know, in other countries. Where are some of the other countries that you've visited? So I've been to six continents and 22 countries now, I think. I've been, uh, the only continent I'm missing is Australia. Um, I just came back from a trip to Egypt and Jordan a couple weeks ago, actually. And then last year, I went with a, a singles group to Kenya. Um, a couple of years ago, I went with that same group to Antarctica and Argentina. Um, I've been to, let's see, so Iceland, Sweden, Italy, Greece, Croatia, Montenegro, uh, Hong Kong, Bali, Indonesia. Um, and that everywhere has been amazing that I've gotten to, to see and explore. So when you're traveling, and especially in a lot of countries that, you know, English is not their first language, do you try to study up on, you know, some of the basic language things that you're going to need when you go to these places? Or do you kind of depend on you maybe someone to do some interpretation for you? Google Translate helps a lot. Um, I also just find pointing at things helps too. <laughs> but, um, you know, usually a lot of the places that I've gone to, like I can pull out my phone and just type something in Google Translate and just show it to them and then they'll take their phone out and type of response and we kind of just communicate that way. Where has been your favorite country outside of the U S that you've been able to have a chance to visit? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, each one has had its own special experiences. I, I felt Sweden, I think was the most magical to me just cause I got to, I got to do dog sledding while I was out there. It was right around Christmas time too. So it was all lit up. It was all dark. Um, I got to do dog sledding out there. I got to stay at the ice hotel. Uh, I got to see the Northern lights. Uh, I went with a group that went snowmobiling out into the Arctic and we got to see the, the Northern lights from up there. So I think that probably has, has been the most magical, um, uh, Bali, uh, Bali and Kenya and Egypt too, I think were, were some of my top ones just cause I got to go with a, a good sized group and, and make new friends on those ones. Now, when we were talking, you would stop by the WTSQ tent during small business Saturday. And I'm so glad that you did. That was just, it was great that you just happened to walk past us. And I don't really know what caused you to stop and, and talk to us, but I'm very, very glad that you did. But you were telling us that, you know, how you fund yourself when you're traveling is you're an Uber driver. 
Yeah, uh, wherever I go with the RV, I, I have a flatbed trailer that I tow my car uh, behind me, right? Um, and then I'll usually, I try to do research ahead of time uh, to pick RV parks that have, that are nearby cities that have good populations. Usually, not always, surprisingly, not always the capital uh, is the best place to go. Like in Vermont, their capital city is um, only like 15, uh, maybe like 30,000. Um, but I ended up going to Burlington there. But um, yeah, I, I just try to find research what the best, populated cities are and, and work around those areas doing Uber. I think that's a really awesome and very smart way to travel. You know, when you know, I would have never probably thought about that and that being an easy way for you to be able to make money all along your trip. And I just treat it like a regular job. I'll, I'll work four or five days a week and take two or three days off. And on my days off, uh, usually one of those days is just relaxing, not doing anything. But the other days is out actually going out and finding new places to check out. Um, I'll either go off of recommendations from passengers, Google, or I follow a website called Atlas Obscura that shows all the weird, unique things to see in different states. And I make it a point to see as many of those as I can. If I have any really close friends that are listening right now, they all probably went, ah, because that's always what I pull up anytime I travel <laughs> is Atlas Obscura. I love that website. They really do find you those little interesting, out-of-the-way places that's not your typical tourist things. Yes. And actually, I got their book recently, too, just to kind of show off. Cause I I usually go off their website. Um, I'm hoping that there's a one place I'm hoping to check out of theirs next year. I'm, I'm hoping to go to Romania. And they actually have like a, they call it Selena Turda. It's a salt mine uh, underground. It looks like almost like an amusement park almost. And I'm hoping to go and check that out in Romania. Are you marking all the places in the book that you've had a chance um, to visit? Not really. I, I mainly use their um, their website. Their yeah. website has a lot more. Um, I think it's more just for a show. I, That's, have, I have it. it, too. I had it on my coffee table for the longest time. And it's just something cool to flip through and say, oh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to go there. That's a really cool place. Fun little coffee table book. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And well, then and it opens it up. You're like, oh, and let me show you some of the places I've been. All right. So you are traveling around the U.S. You've got your RV. You've got your car. And you have an adorable passenger. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your passenger as well. Yes, my little girl. I actually I just took her to the vet today to get her checked up because we're gonna. When I um, I'm leaving uh, West Virginia for Maryland tomorrow, and then a couple days after that, we're gonna fly back to Arizona to visit family. Um, so I got uh, she'll get to visit meet most of my family for the first time. And what is her name? Chloe. Chloe. She's a uh, four year old calico cat. And I have to tell you guys, she is absolutely adorable. And where can people see images and pictures and video of Chloe? Sure. So either on my um, YouTube page, um, youtube.com slash C-S-M-A-L-L 2000, so C-Small 2000. Um, or I've, I've had a lot of people just add me on Facebook, too, which is fine. Um, Facebook.com slash C-Small 89. And then you're on Instagram? Uh, no, I... I I'm working on that. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping okay. That at some point. <laughs> and then has she been with you, you know, all along or is she kind of a new addition? She's been with me since I started in Maine. So after Arizona, Maine was the, the first state that I drove straight through to with the RV. And I adopted her um, from a no kill shelter about two or three weeks uh, once I got there. Yeah. In Maine? Mm -hmm. Oh, so she's a Maine kitty. See, I love her even more now. <laughs> I told you Maine was my absolute favorite state in the, in the U.S. Absolute favorite. It's gorgeous. The people are so nice. And the food it is was. delicious. I still keep in touch with, uh, I still have some friends up there um, from the RV park that I stayed at too over there that everyone was very accommodating, very friendly over there. That's the, the first state when I traveled around that I felt the most at home. That I felt like, because people talk about West Virginia hospitality. And when you come here to visit, the, the people here in West Virginia are so nice and friendly and will point you in directions and tell you places to go and give you food recommendations. And <laughs> some people even take you someplace, you know, but, you know, that Maine was one of the first places that I felt that same kind of welcoming feeling as you get in here in West Virginia. Yeah, Charleston really feels like a small town. I I feel like everyone knows each other. I've I've uh, met do. a few people, <laughs> new, uh, met a few friends as um as my Uber passengers, and I've like new people I meet occasionally. I'll ask, oh, do you know this person? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, oh, 
cool. <laughs> it, it really, really is in all the best ways and all the worst ways. It really is a small town. It's like a, it's a weird, you know, little neighborhood almost in a very large I, way. Actually, um, on that subject, my, um, I think, you know, my cousin, uh, Michael Tawney, he's, um, he promotes the, um, the wrestling. He said he, talks to you guys every once in a while yes yes we do <laughs> see wtsq though we have you know i think there's a little over between 40 to 50 djs here at the radio station and out of all of us i feel like we really do know the entire town of charleston with all of us djs but yeah it's a very very cool thing so you you were here i noticed on your facebook page you're here visiting family yeah, so I, I just learned about them this year, actually. Um, Your family? So I was, uh, yeah, I just oh. <laughs> learned about, the, oh, no, the family that lives out here. Yeah. Um, I just met them just recently this year. They're um, on my dad's side of the family, my grandpa, um, one of my uh, great, I guess my great aunt, she's his uh, sister, I think, um, Kathy. And then I got to meet her and her, her children and their, uh, yeah, their, their connections out here. That's awesome. What have you done while you've been here? How long have you been here? And what have you seen and had a chance to visit while you were here in West Virginia? So I got out here September 5th. Um, I stayed here a little bit longer than I normally stay, but that's because I was, um, I just I did the uh, two week trip to Egypt and Jordan. So I kind of left the RV here and, and went out there. But during the time that I was here, I got to go out to Weston and I did a um, overnight tour at Trans Allegheny Asylum. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did a bunch of the haunted houses around here. I love I love Halloween time. <laughs> um, I did a couple hikes over at Babcock Park. I went over to the um, uh, Glade Creek uh, Grist Mill. Mm-hmm. Um, I went whitewater rafting on uh, near New River Gorge. Um, I kind of briefly got to see Bridge Day where people were jumping off the bridge. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Very good. Did some hiking in Fayetteville. Uh, oh, I went over to Ripley. I went over to um, Ice Cream Sunday yesterday for the first time. That place is, I don't know if you've been there before, but that, it's on my really list. Good situations. Yes. <laughs> um, I spent a lot of time in uh, Charleston. Uh, I, I really like the Taylor books over there. Um, loved, I've gone there a couple of times to bring my laptop and work on some of my writing over there. Um, I think that's the the main main places that I've gone and checked out. You've got some good ones though. That's that's some very good. I'm very glad that you were here and you got to experience Bridge Day because people come from all over the world to jump off of the New River Gorge Bridge. And it's, it just happened to be that day that I was doing the whitewater rafting too, so I was in the gorge just as they were jumping. <laughs> that is awesome. Perfect experience. Oh, and I did uh, Mothman at Point Pleasant and the Fleetwood Monster. Got no, the Flatwood monster. We affectionately call her Braxy. So Braxy. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, Braxy is her is her name here. And we've got a, a store in Charleston called Black Locust Woodshop that has a, a a huge huge love for Braxy and Mothman and also Bigfoot. So if you needed any little things to grab and and take with you something for the RV, that's definitely a place to go and pick up some cryptid. Yeah, we, we love our cryptids here in West Virginia. We're, I like that. It's fun seeing the history behind all those. Yes. Some of it, not the best history, but it all <laughs> shares and, and becomes part of the story. So you kind, yeah. of, you kind of mentioned it that, you know, you took a trip over to Egypt and to Jordan. You know, you drive your RV around the U.S. Where do you normally leave it when you do have to take these trips? I just treat it like a, like a regular house. Um, I, I usually stay in campgrounds and RV parks. Um, for for an extended period. So each state, I usually put about two months. Uh, here, I was here about three months. Mm-hmm. Um, and while I'm gone, I will usually um, hire someone off of Rover, which is like a pet sitting dog, a cat dog sitting service. Um, I'll interview them and typically just have them come to the RV uh, two or three days a week um, just to check in on Chloe and make sure that she's good. Uh, that- otherwise, I just leave the RV um, where whatever campground I'm at. That was my next question because, you know, I had to know about Chloe. Like, who's taking care of the kitty while you're away? We have a lot of cat lovers, a lot of dog lovers, so I'm sure they were all wondering the same as well. So that is very good to know. She's getting pampered and loved while I'm gone. (laughs) (laughs) 
And what's coming up next? I know you had said that you're getting ready to leave. You're going to be heading off. And, and what's kind of the next big, big trip that you have in store? So, so far, the plan is, um, so I've already been to uh, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. Uh, next will be Maryland and Delaware. And then I start heading south. Um, I'm going to go to Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Georgia and Florida, and I should be at Florida by the end of next year. I'm looking the one of the big things I'm excited for in Florida is uh, they have a underwater hotel that I'm hoping to stay at called Jules Lodge, nice. uh, where you actually have to scuba dive to get into the hotel. So I'm going to check that. That's that's actually another thing too that I I really look into wherever I go is I try to find unique hotels and places to stay, and I've gotten to stay at quite a few of them so far, which has been awesome. And do you have a service that you normally use for looking up you know different cool places to stay? Google. Oh, okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I just looked up um, <laughs> top unique hotels in the, uh, in the U S and so a couple of them I've stayed at so far in Connecticut, they have a place called the Windvian that has a helicopter ho- helicopter room. It has like a U- old U S coast guard helicopter in there. And I uh-huh. got to stay there. Um, I stayed in Boston at the Liberty hotel, which is an old prison that was converted to a luxury hotel. And the inside of it still looks like a fancy prison. Um, a fancy prison. <laughs> Well, I, don't, I don't, guess I don't know the best, the best way to describe it, but it, it looks all upscale in the inside. And it's got like, you walk into the main hallway area and it's got like prison bars. It looks like the hall of a of a prison, but it's just so nice looking. Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a um, a place in New Hampshire I stayed at in Conway called Adventure Suites. I stayed in a uh, jungle themed suite that had like a big lagoon hot tub and a light up ceiling and is look like something out of Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. I, I, you, we, Carrie said this when you stopped by our tent and we were talking. I think this should definitely be, you know, just kind of a regular check in. Let us know where you are, what's going on, and, you know, what's coming up next. Let us know if you've just taken some crazy trip. You can call us. I mean, I don't know how that would work for you, but you, we could work out even something if you're overseas somewhere and just calling in and, and checking in and saying, hey, I'm, I'm in. Israel or I'm in, you know, Norway and let us know what you're seeing and doing and and eating and drinking. And so I think that'd be awesome just to check in with Chris. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm I'm totally up for that. And I, I mean, I always post my stuff on uh, my Facebook too, for whoever wants to add me um, and uh, I'm working on getting more stuff on my YouTube channel. Again, give all that information out for people again. Yes. So uh, my YouTube is youtube.com slash csmall2000 and so it's um, csmall2000 and then facebook is facebook.com slash csmall89 all right two more questions for you one what kind of music things like that books podcasts are you listening to when you've got these long long drives (laughs) um so for music i listen to a lot of um I think old classics like Elton John or um, Journey, uh, Electric Light Orchestra. I don't know, I've, I've started listening to, I like uh, Imagine Dragons' new album. I've been listening to that. And then I have um, Audible, so I've picked up um, some good books that I've been listening to lately. Uh, some Stephen King books. I've just finished up his new book, uh, Fairy Tale, recently, which was pretty good. And, uh, oh, I just finished up the... Um, Oh, what is it called? The they made a movie off of it, uh, and then there's two books on it. Um, oh, Ready Player One and Ready Player Two. Oh yeah, Those good. yeah, that was very good. All right, so then my final question: I was giving you, a, and I know you said you were listening, so I gave you a little bit of time to think about it. And if you could completely erase from your memory a place, a country, a state that you visited, and redo it all over again, relive it for the very first time, where would it be? Hmm. So as in like, if, if my experience was bad for it and I wanted to it no, make it a better experience that or? or it was so phenomenal that you would love to just be able to relive that one more time for the first time. Oh, okay. that's a good question. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, probably, probably Sweden. Sweden. Sweden was, uh, was an amazing trip and I really wish I'd been there a little bit longer even too. Um, uh, so I wish I could relive it, but stay there longer. <laughs> so could that be one that you might put back on your list to visit a second time? 
Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I would definitely go back, especially the staying at the ice hotel and I'd probably try and find some more stuff to do. I, I went uh, to a Northern small city called Kiruna um, and the, uh, where the ice hotel was called uh, Juk Sharvi and it was a fun little town to, to visit and check out. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Again, I am so glad you stopped by our tent and that you are now part of the WTSQ family. And of course, I know one thing you're going to be listening to. You're going to be downloading the WTSQ app and taking us with you everywhere around the world. You're going to check in with us and our listeners be listening for those interviews. We'll let you know when they're coming so you can tune in and find out where Chris is. Or you can follow him. Like he stated on Facebook, on YouTube, and he's working on that Instagram as well. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on air. You are most welcome. I'm going to get this after we're done with this. I'll finish it up this afternoon. We'll get it on our website, and you can share it with family so if they can listen if they didn't get a chance to. And anybody who, you know, maybe you only caught the last part of this, you can look on WTSQ.org. We've got all of our interviews on there, and you can check those out after the fact. Perfect. I'm looking forward to chatting further in the future. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. All right, let's hear from our underwriters, the businesses and organizations that help to make all of this possible. And then we're going to get into some music here on The Morning Mix with Maya on WTSQ 88.1 FM in Charleston, West Virginia. Available at 900armlews.com. 